This is a continuation of our discussions on the isolated boost DC-DC converter um, specifically for applications in PV string inverters. Okay, so what we have seen so far in the previous video is that in the uh, isolated boost DC-DC stage we have four um, distinct sub-intervals in each uh, switching period. So in the intervals uh, 1 and 3 uh, this is similar to the on interval of the non-isolated basic boost where the inductor is connected across the input thereby increasing its current and therefore the stored energy. Now, the um, uh, similar to the off interval of the non-isolated boost, there are actually two distinct off intervals, one for the positive hop cycle and one for the negative hop cycle. And in, in these two off intervals, uh, a part of the stored energy is fed to the output through this transformer. So in the positive off interval, the um, diagonal um, pair consisting of S1 and S, S4 conduct, um, releasing, the stored, release, releasing part of the stored energy to the output and thereby having the voltage across the windings to be positive. Now in the negative off interval, once again the energy from in the inductor is released to the output but this time through S3 and S2 and current through the transformer. Uh, but um, uh, we'll see that this applies a negative voltage across the winding, uh, making the average voltage across the transformer to be zero, which is essential in ensuring that the transformer does not saturate. Let's look at the uh, current uh, flow path in uh, each of these uh, sub-intervals. So in interval one, which is the on interval, and it's also the same as the interval uh, three, which is uh, identical. So the current path, um, let's look at the primary side first. So here we have all the four switches are on in intervals one and three. So therefore the inductor current roughly divides equally between these two parallel paths and uh, completes the path through this uh, voltage source. We apply VDC across the inductor. Now there is no current through the transformer, either the primary or the secondary, and the load is entirely supported by the output capacitor as uh, shown by this current path. Okay, and then in interval 2, we will turn off um, S3 and S2 and have only the first diagonal S1 and S4, S1 and S4 on. Okay. So the current path is starting from the positive of the DC source through the inductor, through S1, which is on, and the current now enters the dot uh, of the primary winding. And uh, then continues through S4, which is on, and back into the negative end of the DC source. Okay. Now, since we have a current entering the uh, dotted end at the primary, we will have a corresponding current leaving the dotted end on the secondary side. So, on the secondary side, the current path is uh, leaving the dot, and here we'll have D1 and D4 on for the um, positive uh, uh, off, off interval, positive half cycle off interval. The current path is from the um, from the dot through D1 into the load capacitor combination, returning through the D4 into the other end of the secondary side. So it is uh, the, these diodes D1 and D4 which conduct, which make the voltage across the secondary, if I define that as plus here and minus on the other side, so this will be VO, okay? um, because of D1 and D4 conducting and clamping this end to the positive end of VO and the lower end to the negative end of VO. And similarly, the voltage on the primary side would also be positive. Okay, then the third interval is the second uh, on interval, and this is identical to interval 1, therefore we don't have to look at that again. So let's move on to interval 4, which is the off interval in the negative half cycle, where we have S1 and S4 turned off, and have S3 and S2 on. So the complete current path on the primary side is starting from the positive end of the DC source through the inductor. Now the current flows through S3 now and following this path it actually enters the undotted end and leaves the dotted end on the primary side and then continues through S2 back into the negative end of the DC source. Now since we have a current leaving the dot on the primary the current would enter the dot on the secondary side so the current direction would be entering the dot here. So the diodes that support that current direction is uh, D2. Uh, let's go through the complete current direction. So the current uh, enters the dot here, leaves the undotted end. So we'll start from that point uh, in this path. And then the, the diodes that conduct are D3 and D2. So flows through D3 into the load capacitor combination and returns through the D2 and enters the dot on the secondary side. 
Okay, now with uh, D2 and D3 conducting, the uh, secondary voltage once again defined positive at the top end, negative at the lower end. Now uh, this end is connected to the positive VO, so VO is here. Therefore, the voltage across the secondary as defined with this polarity is really minus V1. So, we apply a negative voltage during interval 4. Similarly, the V primary defined this way will also be a negative value. Okay, so the final step in this video is to derive the input-output relationship. Uh, to do that, we look at uh, three different uh, voltage waveforms, the V primary here. The uh, what we defined as V sub A, I call this point as A, its voltage with respect to the DC ground is V A, so that is the voltage from this end to this end. And using these two, we'll also calculate the um, the voltage across the inductor, define that as V L, this direction. Okay, And then we'll apply the old second balance across this inductance to derive the input-output relationship. Okay, The gateway waveform for all the switches are shown here again for reference. So, uh, in fact, S1 and S4, they have the same uh, gate drive all the time. And similarly, the other diagonal, S2 and S3, also have the same gate drive all the time. So, in, in interval 1, we have all the four switches on. And interval 2 is the first off interval where we have only S1, S4 diagonal on. Then again, interval 3, when all four are on. And the last uh, off interval, negative off interval, where we have only the uh, S3, S2 diagonal on. Okay, so first, let's consider the... Uh, um, transformer voltage V primary specifically so during the first interval when all the four switches are on so the, this end is really shorted by these uh, switches therefore the uh, voltage across the transformer winding V primary is zero as shown here then um, when we go to the second interval where, where we turn off S3 and S2 and have S1 and S4 on uh, by looking at this diode direction we establish that the secondary voltage is really VO uh, defined this way, this polarity is positive VO. Therefore, the V primary using this turns ratio is VO over N. So that is shown here. Okay. Then when we enter the third interval, it's on, once again the on interval where we have all the four switches on. Once again, the uh, the primary winding is shorted by these switches. So we get zero voltage for V primary. And um, let me remove all the ink here. During the fourth interval where we have D3 and D2 on, we saw in the previous uh, slide that the voltage V secondary defined again with the same polarity is really minus VO right, because uh, this lower end is connected through D3 to the positive VO so for, therefore V secondary is minus VO and that implies V primary during that interval is minus VO over N D turns ratio and that is shown here okay. so obviously the average of V primary should be zero and you can see from this waveform that V primary average uh, is, uh, is zero Now, using V primary, I can draw the complete waveform of this V sub A, which is defined as the voltage from this ground to this point, the other end of the inductor. Okay. Now, clearly in intervals 1 and 3, when all the four switches are on, V A is 0. It is short shorted out by these switches that are shown here. So, in interval 1 and 3, V A is 0. In interval 2, uh, since S1 and S4 are conducting, clearly the V A is same as V primary. So, since V primary is uh, V over N, V A during interval 2 is also V over N. And looking at the fourth interval, uh, let me remove all the ink, uh, we have S3 and S2 on. Therefore, um, V A is simply the negative of uh, V primary because of the way the uh, S3 and S2 connect V primary to V A. Okay. Therefore, uh, during, the, during the fourth interval, V A is minus V primary. V primary itself is minus V over N. So negative of that is uh, once again just V over N for this voltage V sub A. So finally I can draw the um, voltage across the inductance which is uh, defined this way. And uh, so clearly V L is nothing but this uh, V N minus the voltage on the other side of the inductor which is V A. So V N minus V A. So that's the waveform that's drawn here. During the first interval, um, V A is 0, therefore V L is V N minus 0 or V N. And during the second interval, it is V N minus V O over N. Third interval is back to V N minus 0. And the fourth interval is also V N minus uh, V O over N. Okay. Now I can use this waveform and, um, uh, and equate this V L average to 0 in order to derive the input-output re relationship. And that is uh, done here. And um, I also define the duty ratio D 
as the ratio of this on interval so the ratio of uh, this duration over one complete uh, half period so that is the ts over 2 and this would be t on okay, so t on over ts over 2 that is the duty ratio okay. now applying the old second balance equation the first interval is this dts over 2 so i cannot even write this uh, dts over 2 okay. and uh, that's the duration and the voltage during that uh, period is vn and coming to the second uh, interval the voltage is uh, vn minus v over n v, v over n and that is written here and the duration is 1 minus d times uh, ts over 2 and i can cancel this ts over 2 that is common in both of the, these terms um, and that is equal to 0 okay um, so from that expression if we substitute uh, we get v o over v n to be n over 1 minus d so two things to note here first of all this being a boost derived topology we expect this characteristic of 1 over 1 minus d that is obtained and uh, because of the turns ratio, because of the transformer and its physical turns ratio one is d n, that will also appear in this input output relationship uh, expression. Okay, so that is a key equation, the input output relationship. And uh, one thing to note um, is uh, uh, because of this n, now v o can also be less than v n um, uh, by if if n is less than one. I should write that um, clearly. So V work can be um, less than V in for uh, n less than one. Okay. Okay. And uh, with n fixed uh, during the design stage, uh, during operation, as the uh, input voltage changes, uh, we change the d. Uh, d is variable as uh, input voltage changes to keep the output voltage uh, constant. Uh, or in the case of uh, this PV system applications, uh, where uh, VO is regulated by the uh, follow-on follow DC-AC stage, we vary the D in order to regulate the VN to, uh, to the value required by the MPPT algorithm.